Welcome my friends to the 16th Colonel Marbles Miniatures Review vidcast. I've got an excellent show for you this week, full of diverse miniatures from numerous different manufacturers. I should also mention, I suppose, that my wife gave birth to my second daughter, Amelia, this week, which is why I'm afraid this show is running a little bit late. I hope you can forgive me. I'm pleased to say that the show continues to be sponsored by Rattlehead Games, fine purveyors of many of the independent sci-fi and fantasy miniature ranges you'll see featured here. Kicking us off this week at number 10, we've got Gripping Beast. Teutonic Knights are always great subjects for figures, and these new packs are some very fine examples. Gripping Beast has three new packs of Foot Knights now available for pre-order on their website. Each pack contains four figures and sells for four UK pounds, which is pretty excellent value. Crunch Waffle are at number 9 this week. This is a wonderful lizard man springing from ambush, sculpted by Dominique Says. No release date or price yet, for what I think is a really innovative piece. MSB Toys are at number 8 this week. Just when I thought I'd seen everything from those nutcases over at MSB, they blindsided me with this, a warrior hermit crab. There are two views of it that you can see here, and I think you'll agree, it's wonderfully inventive stuff. Also coming soon is Bakaboo, who will sell for €7. Euros. Also we have the equally nutty Adam and Kiki, who will cost only €4. Euros. Thunderbolt Mountain are at number 7 this week. Tom Meyer has sculpted three new High Elf Spearmen to add to his standout range of elves. Each variant retails for US$350, or you can buy a pack of 20 figures for US$35. At 6 we have Peso Miniatures. Now Peso are the people who publish the Dungeons & Dragons magazine, and they've started producing miniatures to go with one of their modules. Here's a sample of some of their upcoming releases, starting off with this excellent female swordsman, called Shiva Callister. This is an Order of the Fist initiate, or a monk I think basically, sculpted by Neil Mackenzie, as are all the other releases you'll see here. And this is a Shul Pistolier, a neat looking figure with a rather cool goggle, mask and dragon pistol combo. Bezo have a lot more new releases on their website, but this is the last one I've chosen here. It's a Cleric of Lothian and sells for $5.95 US dollars, as do all the other figures featured. And at number 5 we find our old friends Weird Miniatures. They have just released two new sets of miniatures for their new Catacomb Prowlers range. First up are these apparitions, three ghostly miniatures in 32mm heroic scale, selling for $14. US dollars. The second pack are called the Living Impaired, or Zombies to you and me, I think. Sculpted by Stephen in Joras, they retail for the same price. Tantalizingly, just outside the top three, at number four, it's Crocodile Games. First up is this green of a rather cool Typhon warrior, sculpted by the master himself, Chris Fitzpatrick. Next we have some ghouls, or hounds of the eaters of the dead, sculpted by Ben Sians. And finally there are these excellent Nikaru archers, sculpted again by Ben Sienz. One neat touch is that the heads are separate, allowing for dozens of variations. I wish more manufacturers would do this sort of thing. This episode sponsored in part by the Fiend Foundry, who produce quality resin terrain at an affordable price. Into the top three now, and at three we have hassle-free miniatures. This is their latest green, an excellent Libyan Tigress, expected to be released in November. It's good to see a realistically shaped female figure, even if the fact that she is practically naked and sitting on a tiger pretty much nullifies the realism. And here's a couple of pictures of a forthcoming fantasy dwarf from Hasselfree. This may be the start of a new range for them. I hope so. Dragonblood miniatures are pipped at the post this week and are at number two. They have a couple of new greens, both sculpted by the great Bob Ollie, and both from the same diorama. First up is a dwarf, holding a pretty huge gun, and lighting the matchlock with his stogie. A really cool miniature. Next up is an elephant-headed guy, pulling a ball and chain. Great stuff from Dragonblood, definitely adding something a little bit different to the market at the moment. Part sponsored by Blue Table Painting, your first choice for a quality miniatures painting service. So this week's number one goes to Infinity Miniatures from Corvus Belly. Yes, it's another excellent batch of releases from Spanish company Corvus Belly. These Assassin Rajiks, with their heavy machine guns and jump packs, look really good. And this is Reverend Moras of the Nomad Faction, another lovely sculpt with a nice pose and a cute bare ass. This Salamander Mecha is very good as well, very manga-esque, not that I know a great deal about manga I'm afraid. And the last of my picks from this month's Infinity releases is this Joan of Arc for the Pan Oceana faction, which is probably my favourite because of the come and get me pose she has. 
Great stuff. Well, that just about wraps up another week's show. Thanks for bearing with me over a difficult couple of weeks, and I hope to get the programme back on track in the next few weeks.